uh, let us look at the larger view of uh, investment. Actually, um, basically, we are talking about the financial planning, right? So financial planning for us to hopefully that when it comes to retirement, we can uh, actually have a financial independence where we can do things. So I, I know some of us are still earning active income from either employment, working for someone, or either in the business for yourself. And uh, everyone are looking for financial security and the freedom, right? So including myself, I was uh, actually looking for passive income, financial security and freedom. So uh, let's look at what exactly the financial plan is, you know. Financial plan actually have a key, few key components and we call it as uh, three eyes, three eyes. Huh? So the first is actually insurance, the second is uh, investment, and the third is inheritance. So uh, let's look at the insurance first. Insurance, I know that everyone buy insurance, right? Including myself, I actually bought a, a few insurance. And the reason insurance is to create the financial security uh, for the family in the event of any dread diseases, disability or death. So that is actually a minimum protection for us. But the second thing is the biggest one is called investment. You know, investment actually allow us to accumulate uh, adequate of funds for our retirement. You know, so some or rather a lot of us actually do investment either in property or in, even in FD or even in share. And uh, finally, is uh, we call it inheritance planning is to provide the management and distribution of uh, uh, one's asset after that, usually through wills and trust. So what we're going to do right now here is that actually in the financial planning, uh, any financial planner will take your income and allocate to insurance or investment they advise you. But the key here I want to share here is actually the investment. We are talking about the investment. So let us look at the investment that uh, commonly in Malaysia, that the commonly where we do, you know, some of us we do some investment. So what we do first thing actually, you know, when it comes to investment normally come into our mind is actually what property, right? So property is actually or the second thing what share market or stock, unique trust, bond, insurance and as well as fixed deposit. But seldom people thinking about what the last one is called a human capital. Right. So human capital actually, uh, you know, it is a very new word to someone. But uh, this word actually human capital, when I first hear about this human capital actually in 1998, well, that's many years back, uh, <laughs> that's uh, where, where I started my first career in uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers as auditor, as an uh, audit manager. And uh, that time was, I remember, was after the economic crisis, the financial crisis, where, you know, uh, the regulators, uh, regulations, a lot of regulations been actually drafted up and uh, implemented. And one part of the things that actually, you know, in, in that time was they try to define or try to uh, put a value to the human capital. Because um, we believe that at the time, which is unreported in any uh, company or in any uh, company financial statements. So at the time, the law of regulation, accounting standard actually came out to talk about human capital and uh, you know to put a value into that. So um, in overall, actually human capital is very, very important for any organization, right? So if you are right now working for someone, you are actually a uh, human capital for the company. So, you know, a lot of organizations, especially large organizations or multinational, they invested thousands or even some invested millions into the human capital. Through what? Through education, through the uh, development and uh, through the training. So, all these are basically is to develop the talent as well as, you know, to retain the talents. So human capital always is a big thing in a company. It's, it's bigger than the fixed asset that we have in the company.